Hey, Paul here for Retro Gaming Arts, and today we're going to talk about a really hard game, and that is Star Wars for Game Boy. This is actually the first print. This game got an additional print uh, for the Millions series, where once they sell a million, they do a player's choice and put the little ribbon on it. Now, this game is so hard, I don't know how it got... a Because it's Star Wars, probably, and it's awesome. You get to swing a lightsaber, so... Let's go check out what makes this game so damn hard. Hey everyone, this is Dylan with Retro Gaming Arts bringing you a review of Star Wars for Game Boy. This game is based off the first installment in the series, A New Hope, and is meant to be a fun little play through the storyline, including blaster fights, lightsabers, a world map with a speeder, space combat, and we can't forget all the memorable characters to join you on your way. They, however, made this game frustratingly difficult, unfortunately to the point where I almost broke it before I beat it. When you're in the speeder on Alderaan, you'll get killed by literally anything that moves. Some things shoot at you and others will actually chase you down. It's also very easy to become lost with no map to look at or any guidance whatsoever. You start in a cave, then end up in a speeder without talking to anyone, so finding your way in the beginning can be quite tedious without a walkthrough. Once you find an area to explore, there are many monsters and enemies in this game that just cannot be killed, but will kill you very quickly. While there are plenty of enemies you can kill, some of them are more difficult than others. As you move through the random areas you happen to stumble across in your speeder, you find those memorable friends we were talking about earlier. Most obstacles will send you flying into other ones, as you are pushed back significantly whenever hit by anything. Careful maneuver is crucial while making your way through these areas, which have little direction and are often very confusing to navigate. Of course, the moment we've all been waiting for. We found old Ben, and now he's going to give us our father's lightsaber. Excited to use our new weapon, we run out to the nearest dungeon and, well, nearly get killed by a rat. You'll find the saber is very difficult to use, especially with such a ridiculously programmed swing. Han Solo seems to have a little more power in his blaster and isn't a bad choice of a character. Of course, you still have to deal with traps and invincible enemies quite often. Either way, this game is far from easy and will most certainly try your patience on numerous occasions. Once you manage to escape Alderaan, you have to get through the meteor field. This part can be easy or difficult depending on whether or not you figured out to just hold the directional button all the way to one corner. Otherwise you can try to dodge them, though you'll probably be hit and likely end up dead. Getting close to the end, we've infiltrated the Death Star and if you thought the game was confusing to navigate before, well now you're completely screwed. This part is jam-packed with floors that look the same, all with more than a few doors that look the same, and as always, nothing to tell you where you should be going. More invincible enemies, and of course dangerous platforms you need to avoid and or jump over. You do get to choose from the new characters you find along your way whenever you like, which is an interesting little addition to the game, though it seems to make very little difference who you pick to play as. Once you've managed to navigate your way through this labyrinth of identical doors, confusing elevators, and sudden and random encounters with stormtroopers, you'll have a sort of a boss fight, I guess you would call it, which is really just climbing a ladder and jumping off 20 or more times to blow up a reactor while lasers shoot at you from the ceiling. The next part is when you finally get into some space combat. This part can be painfully difficult to follow the TIE Fighters around with the crosshairs and takes some time to get through. You can use your guns without limit and their blasters can be shot out of the sky, which is the best way to go about getting through this part in my opinion. Of course, as always, when you die you lose a life and at zero it's game over. When you've beaten those TIE Fighters you'll have to hop in an X-Wing and go shoot down some more. This is literally the exact same thing as before, but with a different cockpit graphic. Doing this once was fairly entertaining in a masochistic sort of way, but dying and getting the game over halfway through the second round, well, that just flat out pissed me off. After you've beaten both waves of TIE Fighters and made it back to the Death Star, you get to fly the epic climactic scene where, of course, you eventually blow up the Death Star. You have blasters and missiles, 
Though you will rarely need the blasters, the best way to hit enemies from behind is to shoot a missile when they get close. You'll eventually see the target you need to launch a missile into to blow up the Death Star and win the game, but don't miss it because if you never shoot a missile in, then you will be on this stage for eternity. I personally would not recommend anyone without a lot of patience and a deep love for Star Wars to play this game, even if it's on the go. Well, that's all for me. Thank you for watching, and now back to Paul. How sick would this game be if the entire game was a shoot 'em up instead of just the last level? I think I want, that's what I wish it was. That's what I want to see. It's okay. It was still a really nice, frustrating game. Still had a great time getting frustrated by this game. It was still really enjoyable. It always it, played this as a kid. Play it now. Still frustrating, but still fun, especially if you're a Star Wars fan. So go check out Star Wars for Game Boy. And I'm Paul with Retro Gaming Arts. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And stay tuned for more videos every week. Thanks.